In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure SLAs in your JSM project. Do you get many customer requests in languages that your agents can't speak? Then language translations for JSM by our good friends over at Resolution is the perfect app for you. It allows you to leave a great impression on your customers without having to hire folks to speak every specific language that your customers speak. Check it out in the marketplace. And oh, by the way, there's a 20% discount in the description down below. So make sure you use that when you start your trial. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And most importantly, don't forget to check out the description down below as it contains links to the merch store and to my Udemy courses and to all the different ways that you can help support the channel. Let's jump into JSM and talk about service level agreements. So within the world of Jira, specifically Jira service management, we have this concept of a service level agreement or what I'm going to refer to them as SLAs going forward. Now these SLAs are completely configurable. And in this video, I'm going to show you your options and how to configure them properly. So in order to do this, you do need to make sure you are a project level administrator so that you can configure your SLAs. Now let's jump back into JSM and show you how to get this done. All right, so you're going to want to go back to your project depending on where you're at, but eventually you want to make it to your project settings on the left. And then you want to come down and you want to look for SLAs. You're going to click on that. And once you're here, you're going to notice that your JSM project comes with two SLAs. You have two options at this point. You can either A, add more SLAs, or B, you can modify the existing ones. Now this time to resolution and this time to first response again are the defaults. And what these mean, if they're not already self-explanatory for you, is time to first response. This is this SLA, the service level agreement, the time box that you're giving your team, your agents, in order for when a response comes in to when they make first contact, when they let that customer know that like, hey, we got your request, we're on it. So that you're gonna measure that because from a customer satisfaction perspective, if people are just submitting things to your queues or to your help desk and they're not responding back, they might get aggravated. They might just feel like they're being ignored and nobody wants that. So this time to first response is going to be critical for your team to know like, hey, I got this. I got it. The request came in. We're working on it. Now, the other one is your time to resolution. So this one's saying, how long is it taking my team, my agents, my help desk to actually solve these problems? And so this is another really, really key metric because this is all about throughput, right? This is, we're not talking agile metrics here, right? But so from a, from a help desk perspective, your throughput, the ability to get a ticket and work on that ticket and deliver and complete that ticket is pretty critical because again, the more number, it's like making phone calls, right? You just want to make as many as possible in, in a day. So I'm going to show you essentially how to edit these. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how to add a brand new one. So let's start off with the editing. OK, so if you want to edit one of these, all you got to do is click on this edit pencil. Now, if you click on this little arrow here, it's going to show you the properties, but you won't be able to do anything with them. So I can't like actually make any changes. But if I do click the edit button, I'll be able to do that. Now, let me talk about these ellipses here real quickly. You basically have the ability to delete. So if you don't want to use one of the ones that are out of the box and you want to make your completely own, then you should delete the existing ones or repurpose them. So let's click on edit because this is what we want to do. And let me show you what you can do once you're in edit mode. So when you're in edit mode, you're going to be able to come over here and change the time goal, change the calendar and change the issues to display. Now, let me explain what all these are. And you'll notice, by the way, I can't change the title of it. So essentially, if you don't like this title, you're going to have to make a new one and delete this one. But let's talk about because they're all going to be compared the same way. Let's talk about what the time goal is. This time goal here is going to basically define the timer. It's going to tell the agent how much time they have to do whatever action it is. So in this particular case, most issues, as you can see here, all remaining issues will have 16 hours to a resolution. If, and there's a big if, if the priority of that request is set to highest, then that timer gets dropped down to four. So in this case, if you wanted to make this a little bit more aggressive, you can tell your team you got two hours to fix these and for any other issues, you got 24 hours. Okay. But then you may be asking yourself, well, now that we have 24 hours, 
Is that like one full day or is that like three days, right? Or is that three eight-hour days, eight times three is 24, or is that just like a 24-hour period? Well, that's where your calendar comes into play here. So you have a sample 9 to 5 calendar, and then you have the 24-7 calendar. Now, if you want to check out both these calendars, you click on this little calendar icon over here, and this is what's going to allow you to basically define your calendar. So you can come over here and set your work days. So as you can see, this is just going to be an eight hour day. So when you do set a 24 hour period, it's going to be based off of that. So it's going to be just the eight hours. So you really have three working days in order to fix this problem. So that's usually pretty good. So I'll just leave it at 24. But keep in mind that if you wanted to be aggressive right, and you just wanted to do the whole 24 hours or if you wanted to do your own custom clock, then you can essentially alter either the drop down, pick a different calendar or make a completely new calendar altogether. Now, that's essentially what the calendar function does. Now, the issues to display here, um, this is what's going to allow you to essentially change the logic, right? It, it lets you dictate. Okay, so depending, most of the time we're going to have all the issues are going to have the same value. But if something is priority highest, we want to give it a different date, time, right? So let's just say that we wanted to do a different one, right? Let's just say we wanted to give somebody eight hours, one whole day, if the priority equals high. And so we'll just do that and then you click save and that'll add it in. But notice that I accidentally left the 24 seven calendar. So we don't want that. We want this to be on the nine to five. So anyways, you hit save again, save on all these and then we're good to go. So then all these dates and times are not configured. And so now when I go back and look at my Jira issue, you're going to see either two, eight or 24 again, depending on that priority field. Remember, if your agents need to engage in conversations with customers that don't speak their native language, you can make everyone's lives easier with language translations for JSM. And it's not just about the translations. You can build cues for customers by language or simply automate assignments so that your specific language speakers are automatically given that specific ticket based on their specific language. Check it out in the Atlassian Marketplace and don't forget that there's a 20% code in the description down below. But what actually starts the timers, right? So that's where we get into these conditions. So you're going to essentially have three major conditions. You're going to have the condition for when the timer starts, when, when does it like, when are your people account held accountable for the actual timer, any time that you need to pause the timer, right? Because there's scenarios where your team shouldn't be held responsible for delivering on that SLA if they're waiting back to hear from the customer or maybe they got to talk to a vendor or a third party. And so there's like a little timeout that you got to take. And so Jira is going to allow you to configure and set up that little pause. And then finally, the third option is going to be when do you stop the timer, right? And so all three of these are going to be critical with obviously the start and the finish being the most critical and pause being totally optional. Now, out of the box with this one here, your start is going to be whenever the issue is created and or whenever the resolution is cleared. So that means that maybe somebody finished an issue, but then it wasn't actually fixed. And so they moved it back to to do or they kicked it back. And then that basically clears the resolution and you want your team to be back on the hook. And so you'll restart the timer there. There is no pause in this one, but again, we're going to add one. And then you do have your finished counting, which basically means when are we done? When does this, uh, when should Jira stop the timer? And that's going to be whenever the resolution is set. So, let me show you your options though, because a lot of teams think that they can do pretty much anything and everything that they want, but that's not very true. You do have restrictions, there's limitations, there's rules really that Jira gives you. And so you have to play by these rules. So let me show you what those rules are. So the rules are going to be the same, whether you're starting, pausing or finishing. So I'm not going to do it for all three of them. So I'm just going to show you the conditions so you can see your options. So again, regardless of whether you're trying to start, pause or stop the timer, there are going to be the same conditions. So what are those conditions? Well, as you can see, you have issue created, resolution cleared, but you can also set it or start it when it goes from unassigned to assigned. So that means that when you have an assignee, then that's when you want to start the timer because that's now when somebody has taken ownership or maybe you want to stop the timer when it goes to unassigned, right? Maybe you removed ownership from somebody and so there's no point in continuing the timer if nobody's got the ball. So maybe you want to use this one for pausing or finishing your timer. You can also just in general, like, hey, if the assignee changes, let's do something, right? You can also uh, add a comment. So when the if your customer adds a comment, you can maybe restart the timer, right? Because if, if you're waiting for your customer to ask, answer a question, then you're going to want to pause it. And so 
you might want to restart your timer if the customer responds. And alternatively, if you write a comment to the customer, you might want to pause the timer because now you're waiting. So those are your options. You have your due dates. So if you clear your due date, you can do something, right? Maybe you no longer have the vision of the end of the tunnel here, so you can stop the timer. Or if you set your due date, that's when you're going to start because again, you're committing or you can just do a simple change. Same thing with a uh, resolution. You can either do it when it's set or unset, as you saw earlier. Obviously, the resolution cleared is already taken up, so it's up at the top, but it will show resolution set or cleared. And then the funds begins. These are basically all the workflow statuses. So any time that you enter a specific status, that's when you can start the timer or pause it or stop it, right? So depending on how you want to do this, you can do it so that like you can essentially create some sort of a roller coaster of starts and stop depending on which status you're in. Now, what I will tell you is if you create an SLA and it doesn't have issue created as the start, then that SLA will not be visible until it meets that criteria. So let's just say that you don't want to start an SLA until it transitions to in progress. And you're, that's essentially what you do, right? And maybe we'll do that as, let's just do it as an example, actually. So let's just cancel out of here. And let's, let's just go into adding an SLA. Again, you're going to do the exact, exact same thing. So I'm going to do two hours, uh, 20, just this for all issues, right? You got two hours for whatever reason. This is where you get to name it, right? So just time to demo on YouTube. Hit enter there, hit new SLA, right? And now I'm going to start the timer. So let's just say I want to start the timer when I move to in progress. And then I'm going to pause it anytime that I move to pending. And then I'm going to finish the timer anytime that I transition to, let's just set the resolution to set. Okay. So this is a very, very simple one, but I'm going to show you how that works in a second. But before we get there, the last thing I want to show you is the format of the uh, SLA display. And so I like to do time centric because most of my teams speak in hours. I'd rather just see 30 hours, 40 hours, 50 hours, 100 hours, as opposed to the date. I don't, I, I kind of like this, but because you know when it's going to have, have to be delivered by but I really do like more of the, the timer, so I'm gonna leave the hours. Once you're done with that, hit save, and now we're gonna move back to our project because I've essentially set up the SLA, and we're gonna go into this one, and notice that my one time for demo for YouTube isn't here. But when I move it to in progress, and I might have to hit refresh, depending on this configuration here, yep, and I'm just gonna hit refresh real quick, you'll notice that I should have now a third one. And so here it is, and you can see that it's gotta be within two hours. So yeah, so when we transition it to in progress, then that SLA that I just created is going to be visible. And obviously, if you transition to done or to pending, it's going to alter itself and it'll basically be set, right? So if I set a resolution, it'll change it to say, hey, um, you have now finished. And so you can stop the timer. You don't have to keep going anymore, right? So we get a little check mark there. So that's a quick way of setting up these SLAs. Again, you have to just be creative with how you want to do it, but you do have to play by those specific rules as you don't really you can't like make up stuff, right? Like you can't do any, if it's not in that list, it's basically not possible, right? And so I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're not using SLAs, I highly recommend you use them because the one thing I didn't show you is when you're looking at your queue, you do have the ability to essentially see, whoops, I already closed it out, but you do have the ability to see your, um, your SLAs in the queue, so and they'll turn red if they're actually uh, expired. And really, really cool is you can also do automation rules off those SLAs. So if you want to see that, make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. I'll do a follow-up video for you. That's another cool feature that you can trigger automation rules if your SLAs are breached or not. Getting tickets in Arabic, Chinese, or Spanish? No problem. With language translation for JSM, your agents will engage with your customers as if they were natives. Simply install the app from the Atlassian Marketplace and define your project default language and go. Oh, and while you're doing that, make sure you check out the description down below because our good friends over at Resolution have provided us with a 20% discount that you can use when you sign up for language translation for JSM. Don't miss this chance as they only have a few left. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you smash that subscribe button. We are trying to get to 10,000 subscribers and we're so, so close. We're less than a thousand away. So make sure you take a second here to smash the subscribe button now and also smash the like button and don't forget to check out the links in the description down below so you can find all the different ways that you can help support the channel thanks and i'll see you in the next one i love the chase and the hunt and i set the pace when i'm running i always take what i want and i always give it 100 don't need